Little Wonder by Anamapia. Pia. Chapter 23. Friends on the Other Side. I never understood why people care for this drink so much. Diana amused while she sipped a hot coffee. The bitter drink didn't appeal to her in any way. But since Celestia was the one that bought it for her, she figured the least she could do was finish it. Across the small cafe table sat both Celestia and Luna. Both of them were galvaning down their drinks while doing their best not to shiver from the cold. Diana spared a glance behind her to see the snow and wind pounding away at the cafe windows, chilling nearly every patron in the cafe aside from Diana. She had been deficit of underworld before. Compared to that, the cold she was in was easy to deal with. Oh, that hits the spot, Celestia said with a sigh, putting her steaming drink down and clearing her throat slightly. Since the conversation was starting, Diana placed her mostly full drink on the table and leaned in closer. I'm glad to see you're doing well, Diana. How goes the break for you? Boring, mostly. I miss talking and interacting with the students. Well, you'll be getting to meet with them sooner than you believed. Luna said. Diana raised her eyebrow at the warning as Luna slid a paper to Diana. Sis made another call the day after school let out. Apparently, she wants to move the first two events from February to when school gets back in. The very first day back, she demanded we have the trivia contest. That woman is sure as annoying. Diana muttered as she gazed over the paper. I'm glad to see that she's willing to let us choose half of the questions. Ah, but there's the cat. She wants her school to be the one to construct the obstacle course. Did you already agree to the terms, or did you do the smart thing and wait until you spoke with me? Diana sighed as both Luna and Celestia shared the same bashful smile. I will need to t speak with Twilight and Sunset to make sure they know that they had less time than we thought. Diana says he rose up from the seat. Thank you for your drink and telling me about the chains. Speaking of chains, we heard that you placed three mil dollars back on the soccer team. I honestly didn't know that you could be so kind. Luna poked with a coy smile. I'm actually a very kind person, Luna. It's just that most of the time, kindness isn't the best solution to the problem at hand. Diana replied as she picked up her scarf and wrapped it around her neck. Now, if you two will excuse me, I have other matters I must attend to. Diana walked into the blizzard, lost in her thoughts. So Sense wants to gain the upper hand, does she? She wants to make Sunset lose, that much is clear. Or else she wouldn't have asked to build the course. Which means I need to train Sunset even harder than I was. Sense is in for a nasty surprise as he thinks Sunset will go down easily. Glancing around to see she was the only person on the streets, Diana decided that speed was less of the essence. She kicked off the snow-covered sidewalk and hurled herself into the sky gliding along the icy air currents as she concentrated on the magic of her lasso. Diana follows its frail magic to find it and led to the mall. Glancing away from the eyes of the shoppers, Diana moved swiftly into the shopping mall. She wiped the snow off her coat as she glanced around at all the shoppers, able to feel the magic of the lasso somewhere within the crowd of people. So many people. These places are always crowded around this time of year, but this is just ridiculous. Diana literally had to push her way through the crowd of people. Well, this wasn't too difficult for her, given her strength. Some people tried to shove her guy out by, but Diana never noticed those who she found unmovable. She followed the trail of magic into a clothing store, a smirk crossing her face as she figured what the Sunset's friends had dragged her into that place. Upon entering the store, Diana's senses immediately picked up on the high pitched squealing in the back of the store, one that missed her went slightly. Oh my goodness, darling! You look absolutely amazing in that dress. Now, don't move. I have at least five other outfits I want you to try on. A large smile crossed Diana's face as she smiled a group of friends near the changing rooms, with Fluttershy and Sunset both wearing fancy dresses. Verity was tearing apart the clothing section across from them, leaving Fluttershy and Sunset to Gansy Terrace's outfit. She's not wrong. You do look cute in that, Sunset said to Fluttershy, glancing the floor sheepishly. Yeah. But I don't think it's in my size. In fact, I think it's a little tight. First I admitted, before glancing out to see the preacher trotting. Oh, hello, Diana. I didn't expect to see you here. Hello, Fluttershy. I'm glad to see you're doing well, Diana greeted before glancing over at sunset. It was already halfway out of her dress. She tore off the rest of the outfit while doing her best not to rip it. She pulled the dress over her head, revealing her smiling face. Hey, Diana. Don't worry, I'll be ready in a fat sack. Sunset said while freeing herself from the rest of the fancy death trap. 
Hey, Rarity, put this back, Sun said to Rarity as she tossed the dress to Rarity. She turned around, tiny Cassie outfit with her face. But, but, it looks so good on you, Rarity protested, and Sunset fit her snow cap on her head. Wow, Rarity, you know, this is an odd oddity for you. I know, I have this, so there's a screen time. Sorry, but this is important. I promise we'll pick this up another time, you two. Sunset says she called out and raced over to Diana's side, smiling over the teacher while also trying to put her coat on at the same time. Is it important, right? Is the world important? Not that bad, but I do need to speak with you. Diana says she waved goodbye to Rarity and Fluttershy, who was now the sole focus on the Fasonisa. Diana waited until both of them were out of the store before she began to talk. Have you managed to contact with your friends? She asked to step outside, noticing the storm had dimed down significantly. I sent them a message, but so far nothing. Sunset answered as he pulled a brown book with a strange creature on front. She so flipped over the pages so they were all blank. If they had responded, the writing would have shown up here. Sorry. Do not worry. All we could do now is wait. Speaking of your friends, perhaps you could send a message to the Twilight of this world using that message of texting? Diana suggested. Sure, but you want me to tell her? Sunset barks as she pulled out her phone. Tell her that since this moved up to the date of the trivia contest, she has until school has started to study up on whatever subjects were given to her. Diana glanced down as Sunset typed out the message. While she pressed send, she gazed up at Diana with a serious expression. If Twilight's contest was moved, that probably means mine was as well. Correct. Yours will take place a week after hers, Diana replied. Also, Celestia and Luna agreed to allow Crystal Prep to prepare the obstacle course you will be running. I also expect that whoever they choose to run against you will know the course inside and out. Of course, a Crystal Prep will play underhanded. So what are we going to do? More intense training? Since it asked as she slid her fist to her palm, a smile on her face showing Diana as she relishes the talents. Well, of course, we'll be training harder. But that doesn't mean you're going in blind, Diana said with a small chuckle. I've had a thing of be watching that school when she's not watching you and your friends. Hayes Hayes tries to do anything with the schools. So be able to give us details of the course if she finds sense trying to give her student an ads. If she's not helping her student, then Athena will not tell you anything about the course either. That way we can keep it fair. Diana responded. A buzzing sound that came from Sunset Simmer's coat as the pair reached the crosswalk. Sunset pulled out her phone and glanced down at it only for her eyes to go wide before she stuck her phone back into her coat and pulled the book out once more. Your your friends requested you finally respond? Yeah, Twilight sent the message back. She says that a barrier of magic around the world isn't too absurd, but she's going to need to do some research before she can know for certain. So said said to Diana, glanced over her student's soldier to see more writing appear on the previous blank pages. She also says that the barrier does exist, since you should have a few sp spell books, they'll be able to strengthen it to what you ask for. I see. Thank you for me and ask her to hurry. Diana replied in a tone with held hints of concern. Sunset replied as Diana asked, as she gave her teacher a glance of worry as she closed the book. You're afraid Hades will try something? Sunset asked as the light turned green and the pair of them walked across the road. He's been able to keep up with everything that's happening in this world. I went put him past it to figure out what I would plan to keep him and his forces up for good. Diana muttered as her brow narrowed. There's one thing I've beaten into me more than anything else. Said so nothing's more dangerous than a god running out of options. Hades will try something soon. You have my word on that. The question is, what will he try? Well, it doesn't matter what he tries. Because if he shows his pasty face, I'll kick his rear back to the underworld. Sunset said with a laugh, as she began to throw out quick, rapid punches. Diana shook her head at her student's words, but couldn't help smiling at her courage. She is a far different person than the girl I met when I first arrived here. She is a brave fire and a kind heart. I wish there were more like her. Diana thought before placing her hand on Sunset's head and messing up her hair. Well, I love nothing more than to watch you put Hades in his place. I also want to keep you safe. So please promise me you won't do anything dangerous or take on any force beyond you. Come on, Diana. With your training, I can take on anything that comes my way. Says it bragged. The gunner teaser's eye and her ego deflated. All right, Diana. 
I promise I won't do anything dangerous or take on a foe desolate out of my league. Guess I had to settle for watching you beat the living crap out of them. Oh, you mean like you've been doing all thick? The sing! Thank you for laying some of my fears to rest. Now come, I believe it's time you were taught what it's like to fight on an icy, it's icy surface. Diana said before she snapped her head around to gaze behind her. Even with her enhanced senses, it's still hard for her to pierce through the snow and fog of her eyes. For a moment, I thought I felt. Diana, Athena, keep an eye on the other girls, just to be safe. Diana then placed a hand on Sensei's shoulder, began to tell her tales when she trained with her sisters. Finally, the freaking owl decides to leave. I get the mother, as the snow white owl, to begin to gaze down upon the school, filing up this perch, flew off into the fog. The moment when I was gone, I get to glance around, make sure no one was watching before she took off towards Crystal Prep's entrance. The doors opened before her as she rushed inside, keeping both eyes peeled to make sure she was alone. She's quiet enough, she muttered when she walked into the gymnasium, figuring that the only other students that were here were those that were studying with sins. She sat down on one of the bleachers and turned her palm over, feeling the black blade that hovered slightly above her skin. She got out of sight as she pressed down with her finger, bringing her teeth to appear, uh, prepare for the boy pain. And what are you doing here by yourself? Agatha yelped as she looked into the air. Her heart tried to punch out of her chest as she glanced over to see Crystal and Boulder walking towards her, the former giving her a glare. Oh, it's just you two. Agatha mother as she pressed her palms into her knees. Just us two? How about that, Boulder? First time she's talked to us in nearly a month, and it's just us two. Crystal said with a laugh, before she sat down next to Agatha and gave her a stern glare. You changed, friend. Not in the way any of us wanted. You avoided us, your classes, and all your little club friends. What happened? Perhaps I got finally fed up with you and your attitude. Agatha suggested, while giving Crystal a cold glare. Crystal sneered at her friend's words before standing up and holding out a piece of paper to her. Since it's all this, since you've been selected to go up against Twilight in the trivia contest, since you're a black hole for useless information, Crystal said, with a glance down the paper with annoyance, while well, Devil's Ward here had been selected to face Sunset. Wait a moment. You're finding Sunset on the obstacle course? Agatha Sachs, the most emotion Crystal had ever wanted from the girl. Yep. What? You think I look this good without working out? Crystal asked with a laugh, before she snapped her fingers. Come on, Boulder, let's go and talk to some of the people that would be happy to see me. But well, sorry for me, I don't think that there's... Finally, and he thought they'd never leave, Agatha muttered as the two walked off, without waiting a second longer. She flipped over her palm and drove the sword into her hand, seizing lightly the pain course through her hand. Then a mirror appeared in her grip, and two red eyes appeared on the other side. I've been wondering... When you would decide to show yourself, he said in a dark tone. Sorry I couldn't bring Sensei to you, Master. She is far more skilled than I thought. I get that bit as she hung her head. She is being trained by Wonder Woman. It is no surprise that Sensei has grown stronger, he scolded. But enough about past failures. I have news. Diana plans to strengthen the magical barrier around your world. So not only does it keep me out, but blocks any force I wish to send in. Best he does that. Then I can't get my magic, and you can't become a member of my forces. He spins for her. However, the magic will take time to finish. So this is my task to you. Find out how Sunset is communicating with those who can straighten the magic. Cease their talks. I'm depending on you. Of course, Master. But if I were to fail again... If you fail, they'll have to act sooner than later. He said in a dark tone. That would mean unleashing a force upon your land I cannot control. But before it comes to that, there is you. My strongest soul within the control. I am certain that between both of you, you will not fail. Am I clear? Of course, Master. He's eyes and fierce, and the girl alone in the bleachers. Perhaps he's going to get close enough to sunset to stop her. Chapter 24, first day back. Hundreds of students clamored amongst themselves as they awaited the arrival of the principals so they could bring the new year of the school in. Not that any of the students there cared about school. All they wanted to do was finally have revenge against Crystal Prep. 
since the smartest student that any of them knew was in the opening game. None of the students at Canterlot High had any doubts they would win. The talk died down slightly when Celestia and Luna entered the gymnasium, walking onto the stage and holding up their hands to silence the rest of the talkers. While the students finished what they were saying, Celestia lowered the large screen down over the stage and asked for the lights to be dimmed. Hello, students of Canterlot High, and welcome back to the school. Did you all enjoy your break? Celestia asked. The crowd cheered in response, getting Celestia to smile as her sister walked up beside her, microphone in hand. Now, I'll say no. Things have been a little weird around here. But you so you that will not stop us from teasing you to Just get on with the competition already. Thank you, Floss, Luna muttered before gazing around at all of her students. To hear her slightly, but she figured out none of them wanted to hear her talk about anything other than competition. Alright. Since that seems to be the only thing any of you care about, I will get on with the competition. Also, I assume others you know, Principal Sims wasn't happy with how the last games turned out. So, she selected three events for our schools to compete in, so it would be decided who the real winners are. The first event is a trivia competition, with Twilight Sparkle being chosen to represent us, Luna continued. The crowd began to mutter, so it's wondering if Twilight truly had changed sides, or if she would take a dive for the other school. This event will also be taking place at Crystal Prep, but for those of you who are worried about Twilight's safety, or since might try to cheat, we not. We sent Diana to keep an eye on things. A good chunk of the student body got a laugh out of that statement. It was agreed on both by Sense and my sister that Diana would be there to support our students during these events, since my sister and I are unable to. We believe that we have chosen well in that regard. In fact, I certainly we stand a very good chance of winning these games. Perhaps this will be the first time we hunt Crystal Prep the first lost. Crowd students lost it at those words, causing them to cheer and stamp their feet while cheering for the show to start. I know how important winning is to all of us. But I would like to remind you that all of these games are created to help strengthen the bond between our two schools. Celestia cut in, raining under a parade of students. This competition is about being friends with one another and enjoying good sport. It shouldn't simply be about winning or losing. Every student in the crowd, even her sister, gave Celestia a look that showed that they weren't buying what she was selling. Celestia saw these looks, let out a small sigh before handing the mic back to her sister. Fine. You go ahead and talk to them. I've got paperwork I'm going to do. She muttered to Luna before leaving the stage. I believe you all waited long enough, Luna called out to the crowd, who roared in response. The roaring got even louder as the screen came to life, showing another gymnasium that was filled to the brim with students in different uniforms. The students at Canterlot High began to boo at the sight of the students, but the boos turned to cheers when the camera turned to Twilight. Twilight was shaking like a leaf, and the amount of sweat that was dripping from her face caused her glasses to keep slipping down her nose. So every few seconds, she had to push them back up. As I heard stood Diana, who had a look upon her face akin to a war face. She glared with strength and confidence over the crystal prep crowd, remained silent under her stern glare, despite it being their home turf. Crystal prep began to applaud when Sins walked into the chamber. Her eyes quickly rippled across the students' faces. When they saw it was not Agatha with her, but instead Crystal. I apologize for such a late change to the contest. But I had to remove Agatha from this event due to reasons. Since I explained to her students, I'm just as confused as the Kentucky High kids. Do not worry, Agatha will be competing again at the next event. But now, we'll just cheer on for Kristen. Do not worry about the sudden change. No student in Crystal Prep would ever lose to a student at Kentucky High, even if that student used to be one of our own. The Crystal Prep crowd hissed at Twilight. Seemed to shrink down as she began hit behind Diana. In contrast, Diana seemed to glow even larger in the face of the booing as he glared down each student in the audience until there was silence again. Nevertheless, I know none of you would be happy until we crush Council Out High and prove to them just how superior we are, since continued. But none of the crowd cheered for her words. Instead, every student in the room glanced at Diana, who now had her attention turned to the principal. I assure you that today our victory is as certain as the sun. Perhaps we should begin the contest? A powerful voice said softly, as even more powerful hand placed itself onto Sense's shoulder. Sense slowly turned her gaze around to find Diana glaring down at her. 
cold yet powerful stare on her face. It seems the students are eagerly anticipating the match. Oh yes, you're completely right, Since agreed, straightening her glances when Diana took let go of her shoulder. Students to the podiums, if you please. Both Diana and Crystal walked up to their respective podiums, one of them slightly glancing around the cloud. The other glanced down at her phone with a small smirk of victory already on her face. Now, let the competition begin! The tears of roars of the students in the auditorium distracted it from here once in a while. But after a few screams, Sunset was able to tune the students out completely. She knew what was going on with Twilight versus Crystal Prep was huge for both schools. But in a moment, she had more important matters to attend to. She sat low in the empty hallways of her school, staring down at a list of a dozen students with confusion wrecking her brain. There's just too many, she eventually decided when flat lady say, slamming her head back on the locker against her. Too many, I don't even know where to begin. This seems so hopeless. Sunset, what are you doing out here all by yourself? Sunset glanced to the side to see Sun Fireside sitting down beside her. Shouldn't she be with the others? Cheering on Twilight as she fights against her own school? She'll really need your support if she hopes to win this. She has Diana with her, more than enough support. Sunset replied, showing the list of Fluttershy. What I'm going through is a list of students I think would hate me more than any other students that go here. Um, why would you be doing that? Fluttershy asked. Applesack told you about the creature that attacked me and her, right? Sunset asked, meaning that Fluttershy did not in response. Well, from the way you talked to me and how it chose to go after me, I figured maybe it knows me. Then society had suggested that maybe the reason it went after me was because it harbored a grudge against me. So I've been putting together a list of all the students that might hate me enough to use magic to try and kill me. It's a pretty extensive list. Wait a second. You told Diana about a magical creature? First I asked with some fear in her voice. I tell Diana about a lot of things. There's no point in keeping it a secret. Diana told me she figured out we were magical within the first week of school. <laughs> She saw one of our fights against the Manticore. Remember that rock that came out of nowhere and saved us? That was her. Oh, that makes sense, I guess. But I don't understand this list. Fireside continued. Who wants to hurt you? All the students here love you now. So since face fell at Fireside's words, she pulled her legs up to her chest and wrapping her arms around them. Pain and hurt doesn't go away as easy as some might think. I hurt a lot of people when I first arrived in this world. Says this in a near whisper. I was cruel and mean, and he took my own pain out of anyone that would stand still. In fact, I made you cry not that long ago when I forced to give you Twilight's crown. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the students I've hurt wanted revenge on me. I deserve it. That's something Hades would take advantage of. Was that husband? Flares I asked, not able to hear the final part of that sentence. When Sunset didn't say anything, Fluttershy's gaze softened. She slid her backpack off her shoulders and placed it before her, sipping a reason sighed. You're right, Sunset. You were really mean back then, but that's not who you are anymore. As he said this, she pulled out a kitten from her bag, mewed softly as Fluttershy tucked it in close and began to poke at its nose. You think that showing me Fluttershy with kittens will raise your score? You do not know that I do not score these fix! Since it found, he couldn't help but smile as the kitten began to paw at Fluttershy's finger. For a long time, the two watched the cat play. You're a good person, Sunset. Whatever mistakes you made, I know that you made up for them. Fluttershy comforted. I'm also certain that the students here have also forgiven you. I don't think any of them could think badly of you anymore. At least not enough to try and kill you. Or smile across Sunset's face. As far as I's kind words touched her heart. But was the feeling was replaced by realization and something else where I said me here think. Fluttershy, I think you might be onto something here. Sunset exclaimed she took the list back from Fluttershy. What would that be? I was thinking too small. Yes, I offended and hurt a lot of people here. But like you said, most of them seem to have forgiven me. But... These weren't the only students that I came into contact with when I was a colossal jerk. Remember if we had that joint field trip with Crystal Prep a few years ago? I couldn't forget. That was the field trip where you sent half of their class to the wrong place, 
and an edge with most of them covered in mud and... Do you think the creature attached was a crystal prep student? Where's I asked as her eyes widen. Make the most sense. I haven't made up any of them for my crappy attitude back then. Most of them hate me anyway, thanks to sense. So as I explained, as he started to scan the list of names, what was one of them could be? And what did I do to them that would cause them to want to kill me? Why did you pull me out from the contest? I got to ask Sense as he stood in the principal's office. Sense didn't re answer response. Sense slid a paper across her desk to Agatha. Agatha took the paper and glanced it over quickly. Surprised at her face when she saw her what was written on it. Why am I facing Sensei in the obstacle course? I'm not exactly the most physical fit and student here. Leave me, Agatha. You would not be my first choice to take on Sunset. Sense agreed, before the sounds of students groaning could be heard from the gym. Seems that Twilight would be winning this contest after all. I knew I should have let Boulder compete instead of Crystal. Back to Sunset. Right. See, I would never send you up against her, one of our benefactors. A very wealthy man that has been very generous to our school. It was not lined up with the lineup we had to face Cantalot High. So he has I changed the lineup a little, and have you face Sunset instead of Crystal. Sense explained. During her explanation, Agatha had become increasingly nervous. Feeling like she knew who this person was creeping in the back of her mind. And as he donated a great deal of money to the school, I did as gladly as he asked. In fact, it was on suggested that you and your two friends were sent to Catalan High in the first place. Something about wanting you to know your enemy before you had your battle with her. Hades, you've been playing this game from the beginning. Agatha realized as a cold sweat dripped across her face. Did this donor of yours send anything else when he contacted you? Yes, he had a message for you. He said this was your last chance to do him proud, or else he would take back the gifts he gave you. I got this heart nearly stopped at those words. He also asked me to tell you that if you do fail him again, you have no choice but to send in his most powerful competitor. Now, I do not know what he means by that, and I do not care. But if I were you, Agatha, I would not fail him in this next competition, or me for that matter. Sin stood up and walked out of the room, making sure to give Agatha a cold stare one last time before leaving. Once he left, Agatha clenched her hands to her heart. Fear started to course through her body while she tried to figure out what Hades meant by his message. Whatever he meant, I know I cannot feel him again. If I take away this power, I need to find out how Sunset is communicating with the other world and put a stop to it. Being her in the obstacle course wouldn't hurt. But alone, I'm no mess for her. She placed her finger onto the blade, hovering above her palm, slightly pushed it in. She felt strength course through her body, but a smile across her face when she saw she didn't transform. But I'm not in blown. I've got a god in my corner. The most powerful god of them all. Thor? <laughs>